Hi gang, Marianna McDonald here. Thanks for visiting my YouTube channel for pastel lessons. Um, today I'm going to do a drawing from Acadia National Park. My husband and I go to a national park almost every year for the past 10 years. This year I don't think we're going to be going, so I thought it would be fun to visit the different national parks that we've been to in drawing. So I'll be making a lesson from each one of the national parks that we have visited. And this one is, as I said, Acadia National Park. It's a beautiful park up in Maine. This is my reference photo. Here I'm getting started on UART 400 grit paper. And this is the plein air sketch that I did when I was there. And I can't emphasize how important plein air sketches are. You can really see into the shadows. You can see the color that I use for the shadows here and what the camera has done really darkening up the shadows. show you now is I've got the underpainting done as far as just blocking in the colors with pastel. I use new pastel for hard ones. And yes, the colors are a little odd, but as you can see the reference photo, the sky is totally bleached out. So I want to bring some warmth into the sky, so my underpainting is going to be pink. Generally, anytime there's a shadow, I block it in with a really dark new pastel in this case, I added some blue because of the atmosphere. And where there's sunshine, I usually start with orange, denoting sunshine. And that way, your design is simplified, so you can see it a little bit better. Um, I added the orange, and then I decided to come back with the pink in the sky. I'll add the pink to the rocks. One thing, you don't want your underpainting to be the same color as your painting, because then your pastel won't show up against it. So here, you can see what I actually saw with the colors of the shadows and the sunshine. So I'm going to put the denatured alcohol. It's um, isopropyl 70%, I think is what it's called. It's okay if you have drips. You don't necessarily like it to drip a whole, whole lot. Sometimes more so, like if it's a field with a lot of wildflowers. It's nice to have those kind of drips because they denote all of the uh, branches and what have you that are down into the, in the wildflowers. But I like to be fairly careful with the way I put the alcohol in on because I, you know, you, you go to the trouble of, of doing the drawing initially if you just slop the alcohol on, it's going to just kind of drip into one big mess and your careful drawing will disappear. One of the things that I really like about the coastline at Acadia, of course, is so rocky, which is very different from what you see along the, the lakes in Kentucky. They're rocky, but it's a different type of rock. And uh, in Acadia, the rocks are nice and sharp, so you have a less of a tendency to make your rocks look like potatoes. That's always a problem that I find when doing rocks in the eastern part of the United States. They look like potatoes.
Okay, folks. I think this is as this is as far as I'm gonna go. Um, in retrospect, I think probably about one third of the way through, once I got the basic shapes in, I should have put the, the photograph away because the plain air piece is what I was really drawn to. I really liked it. Whereas it, the plain air piece has that wonderful unifying gray color through it because it, you know it's just a sketch but it has more energy to it. There's more of a, a preciseness of the rocks. You know, you just, I was able to just like put down a, um, a color. Although as I look at it, this is pastel matte paper and I drew those rocks, those basic shapes with uh, a Sharpie pen. I see the lines right there. So that, that was a, a different way to do it. Anyway, first one from the, the trip around the national parks for, for right now. The next one I do is not going to have rocks in it because rocks are hard. Hope you enjoy it. <laughs>